Amen, amen. Welcome everyone, praise the Lord. Welcome to at the master's feet, praise the Lord. We're talking about winning in the game of life today. Hallelujah. Let me tell you up front, we are winners, amen. Jesus Christ made sure of that. He played the game for us, amen, did everything that needed to be done, and he has gotten us the victory. We know it's Super Bowl Sunday today, amen, but let me tell you something. We are in the biggest, the greatest game, but thank God for the one who owns our team. Hallelujah. Thank God for the one whose team we've joined. We are winners. Amen. So we're going to look at how to win in the game of life. Amen. I want you to be blessed and I'm going to see you right after the broadcast. We rejoice in a day that we've never seen before. We've never witnessed before. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Why wouldn't you serve a person who could make a day? Thank you, Lord God, who formed man, who formed the earth, who formed the waters the, by the palm of his hands. Hallelujah. This is your day, Father. So be glorified in this day, Lord God. Be glorified in this service. This service belongs to you. Hallelujah. God, everything that we do, we want it to be pleasing in your sight. We want you to be pleased with our service, Lord God. We want you to be pleased, Father. That's why we don't come just to have church. We want to always enter into these gates with thanksgiving. We always want to come into it. We know it's not the original courts and how the temple was made. But, Lord God, this is your house. Hallelujah. This is your sanctuary. So, Father, we honor you in this place. We honor you in this place, Lord God. We honor you as our Father, as the true and living God. We honor you as our maker. We didn't make ourselves. Hallelujah. So we yield ourselves this morning to the one who made us. My God, hallelujah. To the one who created us. After your image, in your likeness, Lord God. Woo, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord God, as we lift our hands to you this morning, we honor you, great Jehovah. We honor you, King of kings. We honor you for your spirit today that will move in our midst that will shape our hearts and renew our minds. We honor you for your word in advance that will come forth with clarity and power, Lord God. If you don't do it, it can't be done. I take no credit within myself. I know it's the Lord's doing. I know it's your doing, Lord God. I know it's your power. It's not by my might, it's not by my power, but it's by your spirit. Hallelujah. It is by your spirit. So we yield ourselves to you this morning. Glory, glory, glory. Ooh, there's such a, there's such a spirit of thanksgiving. I, I just sense it, hallelujah, that we are grateful. We are grateful to you, Lord. We are grateful for everything that you're doing. We're grateful for what you've done. And we are grateful and we anticipate with joy and thanksgiving everything that you're going to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Your record is good with us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we've seen it. Hallelujah. We've witnessed it with our own eyes. We know without a shadow of a doubt that you are in control. There is nothing too hard for you. Nothing is impossible with you. Hallelujah. Woo, thank you, Jesus. So we thank you, Lord God, that we're able to look even past what we see with our natural eyes. And God, we see in the realm of the spirit, hallelujah, that you are doing a good work. And Father, we are so thankful. We are so thankful. Hallelujah. Thank you for the ears that hear. Thank you for the hearts that's prepared to hear your word. We say that we didn't just come to have church. So we've come to receive of you this morning. Hallelujah. We didn't come to just sit and watch the time go by. But we want to partake from this table that you have spread for us. God, because we're hungry for you. We are desperate for you. Hallelujah. You are the living waters. You are never drying fountain. 
And Lord God, we just ask you to take full control today. In the mighty name of Jesus, take full control in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, set up on us. Because we're seeking the Father this morning. We're not seeking my way or my will or my opinions. But we're seeking the will of God. The perfect place for us to dwell in. Lord, the perfect seat for us today is in your will. Help us to walk in your will and your way. God, we denounce every crooked path. Every path, Lord God, that doesn't lead us unto life. Father, we reject it all now to step into the path of righteousness that you prepared for us. Hallelujah. Woo, glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for your love. Father, thank you for your joy. I can sense your joy here. Sense your presence. Thank you, Father. Woo! Miracles, signs, wonders. We thank you. We anticipate to see the more. Because it's a miracle for what you've done with some of our lives, Lord God. Woo, it's a miracle. Nothing but a miracle. Nothing but the hand of God. Hallelujah. What you brought some of us out of, oh, my God, that's a miracle right there. That's a sign and a wonder. Thank you, Lord God. Some of us have been in stuff we didn't think we'd ever get out. We thought we'd die here. Hallelujah. But you being God, thank you. Woo, you delivered us on time, in time, just in time, at the right time. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, you cannot pay for the presence of God. There's no price tag you can put on what you feel and sense when you come into the house of God. No matter whatever else is going on, no matter whoever else shows up, God, if your presence is not here, then we just a group of people having a meeting. Hallelujah. But if your presence is here, ah, glory to God, we know we're in the midst of something good. Oh, and we thank you this morning. We praise you this morning. We love you and appreciate you. Hallelujah. Just like the sister said before I came up, you are our rock and our salvation. Hallelujah. You know, as I was sitting there and David said, for those who imagine a vain thing, even what they're thinking, Lord God, it can't come to pass. No weapon that's formed against us will be able to prosper. You might think it up. Hallelujah. But let me tell you, it's not going anywhere. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So you may as well start thinking good about me, thinking good. Hallelujah. Thinking about the, the, thing, the good things you want to see God do in other people's lives rather than thinking about bad things. Hey, glory, glory, glory. The goodness of the Lord. The goodness of the Lord reigns. Woo, thank you, Jesus. You are our rock and our salvation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I get joy when I think about it. What the Lord has done for me, what he's done for us, y'all. Oh, what every time you think about what God has done. And then you get joy just remembering it. Then you get joy when you occupy in a place of joy. And you can even get joy when you anticipate all of the good thing that God has in store. Can somebody just praise God for that? Thank you. Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. He's our rock and our salvation. Bless his name, bless his name. Woo, glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, welcome to the house of the Lord, saints of God. Amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. The joy of the Lord. Let me tell you something. When you truly got the joy of the Lord, that'll hold you up. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Woo, when you truly have the joy of the Lord, I tell you what, it'll bear you up, hold you up, keep you going, strengthen you. It is your strength. It's your joy. It's your life force. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord. So don't ever let the devil take your joy, steal your joy. Take something that he did not give to you. Hallelujah. How you going to take what's mine? Jesus died for this joy. The joy that was set before him. Hallelujah. That's why he endured the cross. Oh, how you going to come take what the cross gave for me? How you going to do that? You cannot. I'm not going to let you. <laughs> Ooh, I, I need a runner. Hallelujah. I can't run. Hallelujah. Y'all running y'all minds for me. <laughs> Thank you, Lord God. Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. He's good. Somebody say he's good. He's faithful. Somebody shout he's faithful. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Somebody's getting their joy back right now. You getting your joy back. Hallelujah. You let that little situation, that little circumstance, you let what they said come and rob you and take what was your, your joy is returning this morning. Woo. My, 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 my. Thank you, Lord God. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. When your heart getting merry, your help going to spring forth. Thank you, Lord. A merry heart's going to do you good like medicine. You need to take your medicine this morning. You need to lift up your head that's been hanging down. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Give me a high five from over there. <laughs> Glory. Uh, run on and see what the end going to be, sister. <laughs> Oh, my runner says she was preparing to run. Hallelujah. My producer has said, keep your, your space, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Let's praise God as you're having your seats. Hallelujah. Let me do this before we get started. I want to invite you all to this Saturday's meeting. Now, we are anticipating the women that I'm talking to. They are very excited about what God is going to do. Not mere man, not Pastor Regina, but we're pulling on God. We're pulling on God. We're believing God in this meeting. It's he restores my soul. Ooh, glory, hallelujah. You know, when we were preaching not too long ago, a couple of Sundays ago, we talked about that three-part man. Well, you, we are spirit, hallelujah. We have a soul. We live in a body. And when the soul is deplenished, Amen. When your emotions and your mindset and everything is going on and you're just feeling at this place where I just want to lay down, I don't want to ever get back up. Let me tell you something. David says in 23, he says, Psalms 23, he restores my soul. First, he says, he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. So this is an opportunity for us to be replenished, to be refreshed. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. I've had some of the brothers going, okay, is it just for women? Well, we did design this one just for women this time, brothers, but we got you the next time. Amen. And ladies, let me tell you something. Y'all come, have you a good cry, whatever it is you need to do. Why are we wanting to be restored? We got work to do. Hallelujah. And let me tell you, I refuse to pass by you on the road and see you blood and bloodied and beaten down and just walk away and leave you there. We want to pray for you. We want to pray that God quicken what's down on the inside of you. We've had these meetings. We've called them due season. We've called them hope chest. Hallelujah. Because we're just wanting to allow the Holy Spirit to stir up what's inside of you to restore the joy that only God knows how to do. Because after that, you got to rise up, Sally Walker. Hallelujah. You got to do more than put your hands on your hips. But let me tell you something. You have work to do. I have work to do. So that's why we got to be restored. And somebody say amen. amen. Got to be restored. Hallelujah. 10 a.m. right here, Suites 11 and 12. Meet us Saturday the 17th. For he restores my soul. Can we praise God for that? Yeah. Hallelujah, 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 amen, amen. I want to share something this morning. Let me go ahead and say this will be part one. Amen. But I, I'm so thankful. I really do. I get joy because you, when you're in a place where you know, okay, well, I'm not going to finish. You know, well, you can come back next Sunday and finish up. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that way you allow God to settle you down because y'all know I'll shoot off like a rocket be gone, won't look at no notes. Well, he took time to give you things to write down. I really would appreciate it if you mentioned, mentioned some of it. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I thank God for the Holy Ghost who preaches from the inside of me. Amen. I wish I could tell y'all Pastor Regina does it all by herself. She wouldn't know her name all by herself. Amen. So I trust God and I depend on him. So today's message is called Winners in the Game of Life. We know it's Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah, I don't have on a jersey, but I got my Valentine's red on. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me say happy Valentine's Day to all of you all for next week. Praise God. But let's love on Jesus and let's love on each other. But today we're going to talk about winners in the game of life and then we're going to intertwine things concerning our seed in that. I'll talk about that as I go on. But I want you to let's start this morning with Psalms 128. I'm going to read several scriptures before we get started because it's vital to what we're talking about. And we're starting in Psalms 128. And Psalms 128 says this, Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to him. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Yes, this will be the blessing for the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you out of Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. May you live to see your grandchildren. Peace be on Israel. Amen. And we know in those verses, Verses. We're just going to insert our own cities, our own states, amen, and not rejecting the fact that we want the prosperity to remain on Jerusalem and Israel, but we're going to add ourselves as spiritual Israel in these scriptures, amen. Let's move to, ver to Psalms 112. Now, we're going to come back and we're going to revisit these. I just want to read them for now. Psalms 112 says this, praise ye the Lord. Here we go again. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Until the upright there arises light in darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteousness. This is this man, this woman, these people he's talking about. Verse 5 says, a good man shows favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. Verse 9, he has dispersed, he has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, one more Psalms. I'm not going to read all of this one until the next time, but I want to go ahead and mention this because as we can clearly see when we read the Psalms we just read that it's not only talking about the blessings that fall upon us as the children of God, but the blessing that also falls upon the family, upon our children. Amen. Psalms 144 is going to be the one that I'm going to really pick up on uh, the next time. And I'm just going to read a couple of verses to the 12th verse. And Psalms 144 says, Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle, my loving kindness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield, and the one in whom I take refuge, who subdues my people under me. Now let me skip down to verse 9. It says, I will sing a new song to you, O God, on a harp of ten strings. I will sing praises to you. Verse 11 says, rescue me and deliver me from the hand of foreigners whose mouth speak lying words and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. Verse 12, that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as pillars sculptured in the pa in palace style. And 
Uh, another translation reads that then our sons in their youth will be like well-nourished plants and our daughters will be like pillars carved to adorn a palace. Another translation says our daughters will be like cornerstones, amen. And that is the name of uh, the group that we are getting ready to start. I'll tell you all more about that later. But in the past, so in, the, in this last sum, our focus is going to be verse 12. We're going to look at the things that lead up to this verse, but we're going to concentrate on verse 12, what I just read, that our son may be as plants grown up in their youth, our daughters may be as pillars, sculptured in palace style because woven into this message we're going to talk about plants and cornerstones saving our children amen because we're not but today we're going to start talking about winners in the game of life why are we wanting to focus on our youth because there is so much going on with our children. I don't have any statistics, but I'll look some of those things up. But if you listen to the news at, at any given time when things are happening, the victims are getting younger, younger and younger, amen? So there is an attack on our seed, but there's also a remedy. There's also an answer, amen? Now you all remember last year, God did allow us to do a three message series entitled the seed of the righteous is blessed. We came, that came from Proverbs 11, 21. It says, though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. The scripture says shall be delivered. And we just said this, our seed is blessed either way, amen? Our seed is blessed. In those messages, we talked about the importance of the role of the parents and grandparents because uh, once I was meditating on this, and I, I have to bring this out because we know the important roles of parents, but I, I want to also focus on the role of grandparents because grandparents play an important role in the upbringing of their seed, amen? They speak life into them. You are to encourage them. You pray for them. You even lay hands on them. You remember uh, in Genesis when Joseph was connecting with Jacob again after so many years he had not seen his son, and when they told Jacob, told Israel that Joseph was coming, he strengthened himself and he sat up on his bed, and when Joseph shows up, Joseph didn't just show up by himself. He brought his sons with him. Joseph shows up with his two, with Ephraim and Manasseh. He shows up with them because I'm just seeing, now he's just seeing his father after all these years. Amen. So he's, it's not just about me embracing dad, but I've got a lineage here. I now have a heritage here. Amen. I now have seed. I now have children. I've got sons that I've got to introduce to their grandfather. So he brings them with him. And when Joseph comes to Jacob, this is what Jacob does. He draws Joseph close to him. And Jake, Jake, the Bible says that Joseph bent his face to the ground. And he had his two sons on both sides of him. And jo Jacob reaches out his hands and he begins to pray for him. And this is what he said. Jacob lays his hands upon the boy's heads and he began to release a blessing upon them that only he could do as grandfather and the father of, nation, of many nations. And this is what he said. And Joseph knows this. He knows this, so he brings these children to his father. And this is what it says in verse 15. And he blessed Joseph and said, God before whom my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, did walk, the God which fed me all of my life long until this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads. And let my name, my name, Israel, the one who contend with God and prevail, let my name be upon them. And the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. 
He blessed his grandchildren. Amen. He put his hands up on their heads. You all know the story about how the hand he, Joseph wanted to switch the hands, but Jacob, even though he could not see that well, he knew what he was doing. Amen. He knew what blessing to release upon which son. Amen. So when you think about this, when you think about the important roles of grandparents, look at Lois. Look at Lois and how instrumental she was in Timothy's Christian journey and development. That's why Paul mentions their name. You don't get your name mentioned in the Bible unless you've made significant contribution. Amen. They don't just write your name in the Bible all willy-nilly. Mm -mm. Your name is mentioned for a reason. This woman and her daughter were a power duo. Not trying to compete with one another. We on a mission. Timothy's foundation has got to be laid and it's got to be laid properly and it's up to us to Amen. do it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I pray you were blessed by that message. We told the story of the woman, the widow of Zarephath. Amen. How she had to stop dying. How she had to shift her way of thinking, get a new perspective, and obey the Word of God. We began this message talking about blessed, empowered to prosper, is the one who fears, not just fears, but also obeys the commandment of the Lord. Remember, if you're willing and obedient, you'll do what? You will eat the good of the land. This woman was not just willing but she was also obedient. And because of her obedience, she and her child, she and her household was blessed. Amen. You want to know how to be blessed? Listen, fear God, reverently fear him, and obey his word. And remember this, whatever befalls upon you, it falls upon your children also. Amen. And we're just thankful that we win. we thankful that God is on our side. And if we win, our children win also. Amen. So thank you once again for joining us. It's such a privilege to be in your home. We love you in the Lord. Remember, if you need us, 501-773-1400. You'll get more information after the broadcast. We love you. We'll see you next week at the Master's Feast. Be blessed. Thank you for joining our program at the Master's Feet with Pastor Regina Moore. Soul Gathering Ministries is located at 7600 South University Avenue in Little Rock, Arkansas. For more information, call 501-773-1400 or go to soulgatheringministries.org. You may also email us at soulgatheringministries at yahoo.com. Join us next week for another inspiring word from Pastor Regina Moore.